Wir fangen an und wir haben heute das zehnte Gespräch, Stadtgespräch und diesmal geht es um Karachi. Ich freue mich sehr, dass es geklappt hat, dass wir drei Schriftsteller, eine Schriftstellerin und zwei Schriftsteller aus Pakistan gewonnen haben ähm, und ähm, die mit uns über dieses Thema und über die Stadt Karachi reden werden. Camilla, Sie, Sie wandern. Sie sind in Karachi geboren, Ihre Familie lebt in Karachi, Sie leben selbst in London und haben auch in den Staaten studiert. Sie sind einmal hier und einmal dort. Und ich würde ganz gerne wissen, ähm, ein bisschen über Ihre, Ihre Wahrnehmung ähm, als eine, vor allem als eine Schriftstellerin natürlich, aber auch als eine Frau, die eben zwischen diesen Welten wandert. The primary thing that strikes me is because I lived for a long time in these three places. Uh, two of them were big cities, London and Karachi, and then I used to go and teach in a village in America. Um, and what does strike you is that there is a certain fellowship of big cities, um, that the move from one big city to another is never as dramatic as a move from a mega city to a small village. Uh, that's the real culture shock. When I arrived there, the, the, the first things that strike me are, are very superficial things, such as I'm very tall when I'm here. Um, in Pakistan, I'm taller than most men, let alone most women. Um, so it, it's, it's those sort of, of things. And, uh, you know, I mean, you mentioned being a woman, and you arrived at Karachi Airport, and there's a separate desk at immigration for women, uh, so you get through much quicker than most of the men. Um, and there are those kinds of, of differences. One of the things I do notice, because I'm away for 10 or 12 months at a time, is how rapidly that city changes. Um, and that every time I go back, and it isn't true in the same way of other cities I know, like New York or Paris or even London, um, but Karachi, the pace of change uh, seems quite dramatic, and you, depending on what the political situation is, the mood of the city um, seems also to, to change a lot as you, as you move between it. Well, I don't think there's such a thing as a woman's perspective of Karachi because, um, you know, it's a city of 20 million or 25, mm. who knows? So there are many different realities in there. Um, you are aware of being female in a way that you're not necessarily in other places. In as much as, you know, you, um, there are lots of places I'll go into. If, if you try and get a driver license, for instance, and you walk into a room and the driving license office, um, and there will be three women to 100 men. Um, you're just aware of a lot more spaces where men are seen m in the majority in a lot more public spaces, and that makes you aware um, of your femaleness. It does often mean you'll get pushed to the head of a line. Um, and I have a friend who was once in some official queue, which was almost all made up of men, and, and then a woman walked in and, and went straight to the head of the line. And if there were 100 men, 99 said nothing. And, and one man said, I've been waiting here for two hours. Why do you get to go to the head of the line? And the woman turned around and said, this is Pakistan where women have no rights but many privileges. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I'd like you know, to have the rights that don't require the privileges. <laughs> I think as uh, Kamala was saying, fear is something that... Uh, especially when you're outside Karachi. I'm an immigrant to Karachi, so every couple of weeks or uh, every month or so, I'll get a call from my brother or my sister. Why do you live in that city? What is wrong with you? And I've lived there for about 20 years, so they still haven't gotten over the fact that people can uh, live uh, in Karachi. Uh, and uh, yes, it's not, it's not, the uh, people who live in Karachi who are kind of, it's, it's the outsiders uh, who are always asking you, Why? but you're very courageous. Why do you live there? And, uh, and that you find that quite, uh, quite silly because as Kamala said, we have no idea how many people live in Karachi. I mean, that's the first thing we have to know about Karachi that we actually don't know where it starts and where uh, it ends. We haven't counted our population. Uh, for, I don't know, for more than, more than 15 years. And according to people who know about these things, the city's population has doubled over the last 15 years. 
and that again according to these people who know about these things that is something that has not happened in with any other mega city so if things are bad if things are so scary so how come this every day city keeps receiving hundreds of thousands of uh, people from not just from from other parts of pakistan uh, but from from region as well so you can find bangladeshis you can find people from burma there are lots of afghans uh, so there must be something beyond besides that fear uh, that kind of you know makes people to come there and and make a, make a life there and i was thinking about it having lived there for such a long time i just realized that one thing that i hadn't thought about is actually it has something to do with the climate because karachi is probably the only pakistani city where 12 months of the year you can actually sleep on the street you don't really need a roof over your head so you arrive in karachi and the elements won't kill you there are lots of other things which might kill you uh, but the weather uh, which by the way changed this year and lots of people died because of a, because of a heat wave so that might be uh, changing uh, 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 as well but like uh, any other uh, mega city it has uh, uh, it has its chaos but it has uh, uh, it has its welcoming uh, uh, aspects that uh, you can you can arrive there and you can immediately uh, start uh, making uh, making a, a living i mean that's uh, that's something uh, which is quite basic and which is quite important and as kamla said it is can be very very unpredictable she is talking about months and years it's just like you know sort of monday can be like completely peaceful and tuesday the whole city is uh, shut down and by you know thursday uh, we are back in the partying mode again so that can all happen within within uh, one week during the last couple of months the prices of water and beer have doubled in karachi and i have been asking around why and nobody seems to have an explanation <laughs> so there is a lot of mysterious things that uh, that go on in that city karachi i find the antithesis of vienna because karachi is not pretty and it's not organized um and it doesn't have much of a past it's a, it's a very new city it's about 200 years old um but i think like kamla said karachi keeps changing every time you know every every few years karachi just the roads change um i have relatives in a place called federal b area and uh, it's called federal b area and i keep getting lost because there are new roads and there are underpasses and there are overpasses and and uh, there's construction and so physically karachi keeps changing east karachi eine neue variante der stadt wie ähnliche globale oder mega städte ob es karachi bombay oder lagos und in so weiter sind sind ist es eine neue ein neuer stadttypus ähm weil sie auch diesen Vergleich mit Wien gerade gebracht hat, ist es ein neuer Stadttypus, auf die wir uns in irgendeiner Weise langsam nicht nur vorbereiten müssen, sondern die verstehen lernen müssen. I don't think Karachi is unique. I think uh, it shares qualities with uh, places like Rio de Janeiro which uh, right before the Olympics have uh, gunfights in the favelas and uh, and shit in the sea. Uh, the shit in the yeah, sea yeah. so they can't yeah. the olympians can't swim yeah. so you know there's the, and the shit in the sea outside bombay and the shit in the sea outside karachi so i mean <laughs> it karachi is a uh, it, it 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 is a megalopolis uh, that that um, um the sixth largest city in the world uh, it shares nothing in with vienna but it but there are comparable cities the way you approach a megalopolis is a dif- is, is different from the way you approach a place like vienna and i think berlin is perhaps kind of in between berlin went through great cataclysmic change and one of the reasons why berlin is so i- interesting is if you shoved two different sorts of places together and you were uh, two places that beca- had become different and you shoved them together and you get this energy and you can feel the energy and it's uh, and it's exciting Sie kennen ja 
neben Karachi natürlich auch andere Megastädte, ob es New York ist oder, oder London ist, so weiter. Und Sie haben ja auch in London gelebt und Sie leben ja auch in London. Wie, also wenn, wenn man das mal vergleicht jetzt, zwei Städte, äh, wenn, wenn man das, das Thema zum Beispiel, ähm, ich kenne meine Stadt gar nicht so richtig, oder diese Zonen muss ich vermeiden, weil man das mir gesagt hat. Ja. Geht es Ihnen in London zum Beispiel auch so? Haben Sie eine ähnliche, Vor ein, ein, jetzt rede ich nur auf, ein, auf einer bestimmten Ebene, eine Struktur der Angst zum Beispiel, die allerdings anders gelagert ist. Gibt es so ein Phänomen bei Ihnen oder auch in London, die ist, die ist ja auch eine Megastadt, ja, die ähm, den Kontroll ist, gibt es auf, auf der einen Seite scheinbar, auf der anderen Seite mhm. Ähm, muss man ja auch ein bisschen Fragezeichen dahinter stellen. I probably haven't set foot in most of Karachi. Um, and again, I mean, you know, Hanif's already mentioned the fact that no city has grown at that speed. It's very hard to, to make that real, um, what that means. Um, I'll tell you, the first time I became aware of the pace of change in Karachi was in the 90s, and Keep in mind that Karachi has doubled in size since then. But in the 90s, I was looking at a map of Karachi that my father had, um, which was drawn up in the 60s or even the early 70s. Um, and I was looking at the map, and he came up and he said, he said, do you see what is the center of Karachi in this map is now south of the center of South Karachi. So that's the, the sort of level of, of change. Um, And, and partly it's, you know, to drive from one end of Karachi to another in that traffic, I don't know what it would take. There are also structures of fear. There are structures of class. Um, there is questions around gender. Um, certain parts of Karachi I'd be, feel much more comfortable being dressed in a certain way um, as others. So no, I, I wouldn't say by any stretch of the imagination that I know the whole city. Is this überhaupt möglich as als Schriftsteller ein, eine, die Komplexität einer Stadt in irgendeiner Form zu erfassen und aber auch, ähm, wie soll ich sagen, einer Stadt wie Karachi zu erfassen und auch in Form eines Romans, ähm, wie soll ich sagen, umzusetzen und, zu, und auch zu beschreiben, zu erläutern. No, it's not possible, but one must try. Uh, okay. with the certain knowledge that, uh, uh, that you will fail. Uh, but uh, that uh, does not mean that there are things about a city uh, which do not uh, fascinate you if you've kind of lived there for such a long time, if you breathe the air and, and there are all these people and stories uh, around you. Uh, so you cannot help Uh, but try and, 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 and capture uh, uh, some of that. And I just want to go back to the a question that you asked earlier, whether it's a new kind of mega city. So I haven't, seen, mm, uh, I haven't seen South American big cities, but I've seen some big cities. And I do think it's a new kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, a city because, uh, uh, because we don't know uh, where the city starts and where it ends. I used to think, and it was almost true that nobody has seen the whole of Karachi. Now, nobody's even heard of the whole of Karachi. <laughs> There are places that did not exist two years ago or one year ago. A friend of mine just got a job, an engineer friend of mine, and I said, where is it? He said, black waters. Like, <laughs> I said, black waters, where is that? And why is it called black waters? He said, because it's so bloody far away, that's why it's called black water. <laughs> And so he has a job there in a place which I didn't even know, which he even didn't know uh, exists. One of the most dangerous uh, uh, neighborhoods in Karachi is known as Liari. It's um, uh, for various uh, socio-cultural, socio-political reasons, uh, it has been ceded to gangsters. Um, I, after I finished Homeboy, uh, started conducting research for my second novel, and uh, parts of it uh, are set in Liari. 
I don't have a great imagination, so I have to actually uh, sort of uh, do my homework. And so I had I knew a couple of people in Liari, and I'd say that could I can I come? Can I can I spend some time there? And they would say not this week. Uh, why don't you try next week? And then it was not this month. And then why don't you try next month? Because there would be gunfights, routine gunfights. Uh, mm -hmm. So. During the World Cup, uh, my, 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 my man finally called me up and said, actually, uh, the next few weeks, you can come anytime you want. Uh, it's, uh, there's, there's peace. So I said, w why, how? Well, it's because Leari produces uh, some of the great, greatest footballers in, in Pakistan. And uh, and during the World Cup, the the, the gangster who runs who said to uh, run the, the that area, he puts up these screens that are larger than this room, uh, 26 screens, uh, and every at night it would be a party, and so there'd be beer on the streets and uh, gangsters watching football. There was, there was, Peace was declared. The Ari was transformed during this time, and it was, and yeah, I mean, one has, there, there are certain realities to the Ari and uh, that need to be addressed. And there's also, uh, you know, start to sound silly, uh, humanity in the Ari and, uh, you know, humanity uh, in, in parts of the city that you don't expect. So. Again, yeah, I don't. You see, that's the thing. You call them gangsters. They call themselves community workers. That's the with guns. That's the difference. I mean, they really see yeah, themselves yeah. as doing basic social work that the government is not doing. You know, they're providing basic services. You know, security, yeah. housing, jobs. You know. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And the government has guns too. Yeah. It's not really a difference. <laughs> I think a lot of it is more, far more explicable than people. Realize, I, you know, it's good to have a guru. Karachi has one. His name is Arif Hassan. Mm. Um, and if anyone actually is genuinely interested in the city, um, go and find his website. It's A R I F H A S A N. Um, he's an extraordinary font of knowledge on all kinds of things. Um, and when you sit and you talk to Arif Hassan, things make sense because he's bothered to find out. Um, you know, so a lot of the what looks random to us has its roots in economics, as most things do, and the struggle for economic power. Um, and within that, you have different and shifting alliances. Um, and a lot comes out of that. But, um, but go and read Arif Hassan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And his latest research, uh, kind of, he was doing a small survey, which kind of uh, shows that divorces in Karachi are kind of, uh, divorce mm -hmm. rate is going up. And mm -hmm. the reason for that mm -hmm. is that women are becoming more uh, independent uh, economically, so they don't have to uh, stick around if they don't uh, want to. And that's something that's not uh, discussed a lot, uh, but a lot of change that's happening in Karachi uh, is, uh, is happening because of women.